All right, let's talk about MERS. First of all, what is MERS? Well, Rick, MERS stands for the Multi-Use Radio Service. MERS was created by the FCC in the year 2000, and it is five VHF frequencies that have been set aside for business or personal use, and there's several advantages to using the MERS um, system. First of all, there's no license requirement. That's in contrast to GMRS, where you are required to have a license in order to use a GMRS frequency. There is a two watt maximum transmit requirement on MERS. So radios on MERS are not allowed to transmit over two watts of power, but while that's a little lower than the five watts allowed with GMRS, with um, two watts of power, you can get pretty good range out of a radio. And the five frequencies that have been set aside for MERS are all in the VHF range. That is, I would say, a disadvantage in general because UHF frequencies are typically better because they penetrate steel and concrete structures better. VHF are um, much better for outdoor only type communications. But if you're using a radio outdoors, MERS is, is a good option for you. So it is a bit limiting, but um, would you say that's about the only disadvantage to MERS, really? Um, well, there are a couple of other disadvantages. There's a um, few radios to choose from on the market. There aren't many manufacturers that are making MERS-specific radios, radios that, that are built in and approved for use on MERS. Now, some other uh, radios, from a technical standpoint, they could be programmed MERS, but from a legal standpoint, you really can't. I'm, and the reason I'm bringing this up, because I, I think that's a very important thing to mention, because we do get a lot of questions from people saying, you know, I, can I program this radio for MERS, or it should take a MERS frequency, can you do that? The answer is, technically it's possible, but The, the best no. answer is, is to no. buy a radio that's for MERS yeah. specific use. And um, actually, before uh, the MERS system was created by the FCC, these frequencies, the five MERS frequencies, were in the business band. So they were business VHF frequencies. And in fact, two of the MERS frequencies were used as default frequencies for some very, very popular two-watt business radios. Like uh, the Kenwood TK2200 series used these frequencies. Um, and the Motorola XTN series, like the XV2100, XV2600. Those radios use these frequencies by default even. So um, we have a lot of customers who are still using these older radios that are using MERS. And because the FCC has now allocated these frequencies for other uses, replacement radios for these models have to use different frequencies than MERS. Uh -huh. So these guys, um, if they buy the latest and greatest Kenwood or Motorola model, may have some compatibility issues. So um, the good thing is they can buy a MERS radio because there's no restriction on business versus personal use. A business can buy a MERS radio, license free, use the radio, and have something that will work with their older models. And if you're using those XTN radios, it's pretty simple to figure out what frequencies you're using. Um, I think out of the box, the default was MERS. Absolutely, yeah. I think it was the the one fifty four point five seven. That's right. So they they will talk to the the RDM series out of the box. But if, I mean, if you have any questions about you know if you're using XTN radios and need to know which model you need, call us and we can walk you through figuring out what frequency you're using. That's probably the best thing to do. It if is. Anybody's not sure. And as a business, if you're just um, buying radios for the first time and you have limited range needs, you should probably consider a, a MERS radio. Some disadvantages are you're not going to be able to add a repeater later if you need more range, but an advantage is you don't need a license. If you're concerned about the licensing process for your business radio, go MERS. There's, there's not a lot of drawbacks. In fact, some big retailers already use MERS frequencies. Walmart and Costco mm -hmm. use the MERS frequencies. It's pretty simple because they just hand the radios off to their employees. You know, once again, they don't have to worry about the licensing issue. Just say, hey, here, take a radio, go. That's right. 
don't have to worry about it. As far as uh, the consumers are concerned, that can be a bit advantageous for the consumers who want a little bit more power. Right. Um, for the outdoor uses, that's where we get a lot of questions from, from individuals looking for MERS radios. If you're hunting, camping, um, outdoor activities like that, a VHF radio has certain advantages, and the MERS radios that are available are business quality radios, so they're much better than the GMRS radios that you would typically find out there. Getting a lot of motorcyclists that are wanting to buy switch to MERS. One, they're getting, most of them are using GMRS. Mm -hmm. They get a lot of interference and things like that, and they want to step it up and get a more quality radio, better sound, a little bit better range, but a lot of guys are switching over to this MERS radio. That's interesting you should say that, motorcyclists uh, using MERS radios. Um, how would that work, say, with other people that want to use it over the open road, you know, besides motorcyclists, you know, anybody on a road trip, that would work? And we just discussed that in uh, the last episode of the two-way radio show. I think they would work okay. I mean, it's, they're not going to get you. Cars will affect your range quite a bit. Yeah, the uh, metal and the glass. The, exactly. And the glass. So With yeah. a motorcycle, it's, it's, you, it's you pretty would open. get more range That's because... Right. Uh, I mean, two watts versus um, four or five watts potentially for a GMRS radio. So you, you're got, you've got a little less power, but VHF signals travel a little further than UHF mm -hmm. um, outdoors. So that's a positive. Uh, I think one advantage might be that um, you don't have as much interference because there aren't that many other MERS radios out right. there. GMRS, if you're traveling you're probably going to get some chatter from other vehicles, other people on the roads using radios. Very few of those people are going to be using MERS frequency, so you're going to have some exclusivity. That's uh, Unless you're that's, driving by Walmarts and Costcos. And you know, <laughs> yeah, but, or you take one in there. Um, that, that could be a disadvantage as well, though. Don't uh, don't just buy a MERS radio and, and um, mm -hmm. you know plan to use it with the other bikers that, that you ride with. That's because right. Most likely, they're not going to have these radios. You need to communicate in advance and say, hey, everybody, let's go MERS. That's right. Okay. Anything else that we really need to know specifically about MERS? Um, I, I think we covered it, Rick. Well, so if you're, if you're looking for an alternative to an FRS, a GMRS solution, uh, you don't want to go with a full business radio and get a business license, it's possible that uh, MERS radio might be the way to go. That's right. In, in summary, a MERS radio uh, uses VHF frequencies. There's no license requirement, but there's a 2-watt maximum transmit power, and there's no restriction at all on whether it's used for business or personal. Disadvantages are there's few to choose from, and not many other people are going to have a MERS radio. So talk to people that you would be communicating with and make sure everyone else has a MERS radio. Okay. Well, there you have it. That's all about MERS.